Perhaps it'd be a good idea to tell you about my journey into ham radio contesting. Basically, I'm a non-competitive individual. I never competed in any organized sports. Baseball and football in the neighborhood was about it. Uh, competition actually made me feel quite uncomfortable. The possibility of competing against seasoned ham radio operators was off the table. It just was not going to happen. It was simply a non-starter. I talked to my Elmer, uh, Scott, N3FJP, and he, he more or less convinced me to give it a try. At the time, I had my general ticket. Uh, I was barefoot in a townhome. I still am. Uh, an N-fed long wire was all I had, so there wasn't any superstation here. And so let's be honest, uh, the idea of, um, of competing just didn't seem to ring well. But Scott said, you know, Dean, you could probably pick up your 50 states and a whole bunch of countries and entities uh, along the way. And I went, well, now that piqued my interest. That seemed like a heck of a good idea to me. So let's be honest. Let's, let's go from there. A few contests later, I had my worked all states and my DXCC. And basically, I was competing against myself, which was fine. And if I went into a second contest, I was doing, well, pretty much trying to beat my last score. And that was it. Now I'm an extra. I have a modest station with an amplifier and some dipoles. I'm not a force in the club for competing at all by any stretch of the imagination. I'm kind of in the middle. But contesting has organically grown with me over time. Uh, I look at the scoreboard now and then and I do see who's above me. And I may want to try and climb up there a little bit, but I keep into perspective. I'm not a superstation. Um, these folks have towers and beams, but that's okay. Contesting is a personal thing, and I think that's what I'd like you to take away from this. It's a great way to collect entities and also to learn about your station's capabilities, what your station's good at, where it could, uh, and then where it could be improved, what you could do later in terms of projects. Um, but most of all, it also helps you improve as a ham radio operator, and it helps you improve your skills. So give it a, some thought, give it a try and um, keep my little story in mind. So when you're ready, don't say no. Say, yeah, I think I'll try that next contest. Let's give it a shot. Zero Bravo Hotel, W Zero Bravo Hotel, contest. PLO three, Japan Delta Foxtrot. A three, Japan Delta Fox, five nine, Kansas. Five nine, Maryland. Thank you, W Zero. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. This greeting is for amateur radio operators around the world, as we're not exactly sure when you're going to view this clip. My name is Dean, KA3YJM, and in this clip, we're going to describe the bare minimal basics of radio contesting, while a few pics of our cast of characters come across your screen. You'll also see some lighthearted comic relief interspersed throughout the presentation too. We hope that you enjoy them. We'll also explain what contesting is, a little bit about some generic contesting rules, and lastly, how we in the Northeast Maryland Amateur Radio Contesting Society, we refer to ourselves as NEMARC for short, use the N3FJP contesting software suite and Discord as our virtual clubhouse. While wow, we're having fun contesting and we're doing some live video streaming too. Our objective is to entice you to try contesting, be it with our club if you're within our area or with another club near you. So let's dive in. Contesting. These are the voyages of the contest station KE3GK. Its 25 year mission is to totally crush any opposition and to boldly go where no man or contester has gone before. So here we go. The basics of radio contesting as a radio sport. Without my reading this to you, from Wikipedia, you can see basically it's a two-way contact with another station that's verified under certain parameters. And we'll talk about those parameters too that make up a contest and a competition to maximize a score. Some several common sponsors of contests include these three. One, you've got the ARRL. They've got a bunch of different contests all around the year. And what makes these contests really special is they're on every band, they cover every mode, and every age group, youngsters, 
up to Elmers who have been practicing amateur radio for years. Then there's the CQ contests, of which there are seven big ones, uh, worldwide, WPX, RIDI, 160, VHF, and the Digi. And then there are some local ones that are regional, like state contests sponsored by local clubs. So there's your sponsors of different contests. There are many. They're mostly in the fall and in the winter and springtime. Now, every contest has some basic rules. Now, they're, they're, they vary between contests, but basically they're these. One, you're only going to be limited to certain bands, so you can kind of expect a theme uh, around that. Also, they're at certain times. For instance, we may have a competition or a contest that's 24 or 48 hours. Most are 48 hours. And then there's an exchange. The exchange is neat because it may be to send and receive a serial number or a location or a time or even a person's age. And in November sweeps, I think there's like five different pieces of information that must be exchanged both ways between both operators to be a legitimate exchange and to get points. So there are only certain operating configurations that can be used as well. For instance, you know, you may be low power or a single operator or multi-operator and so on and so forth. So there's some basic rules here that would be applied to individual specific contests that you participate in. Now, N3FJP contesting software. In NEMARC, we use N3FJP's contesting suite, all the different types and kinds. This just happens to be an example from ARRL's International DX contest. It happens to be my log part, part of the way through. We use this contesting software for several reasons. We, it partially fills in information for us. It uploads to our scoreboard through a server so that we can see how everybody in the contest that's participating is, uh, is doing and where they are and what bands they're operating on. And we'll show you that in just a second. So here's an example of our scoreboard. Now, this scoreboard is produced from N3FJP's contesting software. The individual clients that are participating are uploading their scores. And they come to the scoreboard for a server. And we call that process and what's going on there using the uploader. And this is the results of the uploader, the scoreboard. And what's really neat about this contesting software is that during the contest, we can see a number of things as participants. For instance, where the leaders in the current particular contest are running, what frequencies they're on. For instance, this contest is passed. There's no run rates here, but they're up on 20 meters. Now, NT3U happens to be lower. He's on 40 meters and so on and so forth. But one of the biggest advantages here is you can take a look at an individual person's scores and their multipliers. I'm going to click on my call sign. And right away, you can see my statistics at this point in time. What's interesting is I have 99 multipliers. And we're going to get a great explanation on multipliers next. So stand by. What are multipliers? In addition to QSO points, Multipliers are the other half of the scoring equation. Typically, they are ARRL sections, DX entities, or CQ zones. For example, here's my 2017 CQ Worldwide International DX log in which DX entities were multipliers. I had 2,838 points multiplied by the 295 multipliers that gives a total score of 837,210. In this case, the multipliers were listed once per band. So these types of scoring rules are great in that they show the strengths and weaknesses of our station, and it gives us incentive to do well on all the bands. Sounds like the contest is getting ready to start. So I'll uh, see you in about 48 hours. You seek your contest, seek your contest. This is Kilo Echo 3 Golf Kilo. Kilo a Radio, seek your contest. Golf 3, Foxtrot, Japan, Papa. An all way free, Fox, Japan, Papa, 59400.
Thank you, Mike Zero, Norway, Kilo Radio. Time testing can drive you absolutely nuts. Hi there, my name is Tom, KE3GK, and I will be the first to, to admit I am a contester. Now, it's, it, it is something I'm proud of, personal goals of contesting for myself, is to beat the pants out of everybody else in our club. I, mean, I want to sock it to them. And, and I have to also give credit where credit's due. I, I was uh, a study under two of the best contesters I've ever known. And that happens to be W3JX and N3FJT. And when they contest, they, they are out. They want to rip your guts out and make you know it and then laugh at you. Um, uh, so that's uh, my personal goal is really to uh, uh, try to beat those two uh, in contesting. Uh, my strategy for contesting is very simple. It is sitting in the chair. The more time I put in the chair, the better my contesting results are. Now, I also pay a penalty for that because I stay up all night. When a lot of the members of our club go to sleep, say around 7 p.m., as old men do, uh, I'm up to 2 or 3 in the morning racking up points. So that's part of my strategy. But time in the chair is the most important. Uh, to me, uh, I, I'm not out to get a bunch of uh, contacts. I'm out to get a bunch of multipliers. The multipliers add up to the points much quickly, uh, much more quickly than just making random contacts. So I am seeking multipliers uh, when I do contesting. And I guess the final question is, why do I do it? My wife asked me that. Why do I do it? For a whole weekend, she really don't, uh, she doesn't see me. I don't see her. Matter of fact, there's been weekends I forgot her middle name. I, I just, uh, I'm down here in like a dungeon. This is my ham radio shack, by the way, that you're looking at. Um, I live down here. Uh, I, I bring my soda and my coffee and my donuts down here. And I basically live here. Why I do it, it, you know, in the beginning of the contest, we all have these great visions of grandeur, grandeur and, and uh, uh, victory and how sweet it is, uh, you know, to do this contesting. By the end of it, we all ask ourselves that question. What did we just do? What I just spent 48 hours in here in the, in the dungeon contesting. Why did I do that? And that is the, that is the question of all time. I don't know if anybody can really answer it because at the end, you're burnt out, you're tired, you don't want to look at another radio or speak of it. Um, you just want to relax. But I guess the ultimate, really the ultimate goal is to have fun with a group of people that you really enjoy hanging out with. And that would be the Northeast Maryland Amateur Radio Society or, or Club and Contesting Society. Great group of guys. And I just enjoy their company. Uh, so. Maybe that's really the reason I do it. They're a bunch of good friends. Thank you for listening. It's, it's been all lies, by the way. So um, I am the, <laughs> I won't even go there. Hi, I'm Bernie, K4 JDF. And I am what I like to call myself a non-contester. A lot of people have goals in contests. I don't have goals in contests. I've always liked to do quality versus quantity. And just by doing that means that one of the things I'd like to do during a contest is see if I can get uh, worked all states. How many states can I get worked in a, in a weekend? Or DXCC, can I work 100 countries? A couple weekends ago during the ARL DX contest, I worked 76 countries. So that's kind of fun. And sometimes I like to better my score from last time. If I was a contester, what's the best part of contesting? The best part is watching the real contesters, contesters battle it out 
Um, that's always fun as they fight for one, two, and three. And usually the guys who stay up at night, usually they're in the top couple. So contesting can be fun for a lot of people, and especially if you're a driven, competitive person. You'll love contesting. If not, take the non-contest route like I do and just sit back and enjoy it and don't worry about how many uh, contacts you make. Thank you for watching and 73. I am the ham from uncle. I am reporting to you in disguise, but I am about to give you the greatest secret for contesting of them all. It's called Time in the Chair. Contesting is a personal thing, and I think that's what I'd like you to take away from this. It's a great way to collect entities and also to learn about your station's capabilities, what your station's good at, where it could, uh, and then where it could be improved, what you could do later in terms of projects. Um, but most of all, it also helps you improve as a ham radio operator, and it helps you improve your skills. So give it a, some thought, give it a try, and um, keep my little story in mind. So when you're ready, don't say no. Say, yeah, I think I'll try that next contest. Let's give it a shot.